My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today we celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. She appeared to three Portuguese shepherd children in 1917, with the first apparition being on May 13th, today. And Mary, our mother, had something she wanted to communicate to these children and through these children. At the heart of Mary's message is the need for penance, for reparation for sins. And Mary wanted to give us a special message, a special wake-up call, a wake-up call regarding what is truly at stake the salvation of souls. Mary appeared to three shepherd children, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta. They were very young. Lucia was ten, Francisco was nine, and Jacinta was seven. And she appeared to them, to the three of them, six times. And that does not count the private apparitions to Jacinta and Lucia later on. And in Mary's first apparition, she asked them, Do you want to offer yourselves to God to endure all the sufferings that He may choose to send you as an act of reparation for the sins by which He is offended and as a supplication for the conversion of sinners? Lucia promptly responded for all three, saying, Yes. We want to. Then Mary said, Then you are going to suffer a great deal, but the grace of God will be your comfort. The children were then filled with a desire to offer up as much as they possibly could for sinners. Hunger, physical pain, lack of sleep. Let us also ask Mary in Jesus for that same desire to make up for sins. Jesus, we ask you face to face, and Mary, you too, grant that we may truly desire the repentance of all sinners. First and foremost, our own repentance, and then the repentance of everybody. Of each individual person. May we also have a desire, Lord Jesus, to actually make reparation for sins, for our sins, for the sins of others. And we may then ask ourselves, or we ask Jesus himself, Jesus, what kind of sacrifices would you like me to offer? And of course, that's a very personal question. Our Lord will show each one of us what those sacrifices are. But I did want to quote Sister Lucia, because later on she will become a nun. What Sister Lucia said many years later with regards to penance. She said, Many persons, feeling that the word penance implies great austerities, and not feeling that they have the strength for great sacrifices, become discouraged and continue a life of lukewarmness and sin. The sacrifice required of every person is the fulfillment of his or her duties in life and the observance of the Lord's law. This is the penance that he now seeks and requires. That's such a great message for me and for you. When we hear the word penance, we may think of things that are very difficult to do something extraordinary or extreme, and it's possible the Holy Spirit may ask us to offer up sacrifices like that. But one thing is for sure, is that just in our ordinary life, in our daily duties, 
in our daily prayer, in following the Lord's commandments, we can carry out all of that with a spirit of penance by telling God that, God, I want this time of prayer to be in reparation for my sins and the sins of the whole world. And there you go. We just did it. We just did it. With that desire, our Lord will bring about a lot of good with our cooperation to His grace. He brings about a lot of good. In one of the apparitions, Mary shows the three children hell. It's terrible what they see. And after showing them hell, Mary explains, You have seen hell, where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wills to establish throughout the world the devotion to my immaculate heart. If people will do what I tell you, many souls will be saved, and there will be peace. So once again, what is at stake? The salvation of souls. My soul, your soul, the souls of everybody. Jesus, we don't want to be distracted by selfishness, greed, sensuality. This world is a beautiful world that God created. But there's also sin, which we commit, and which distracts us terribly from God. We can be distracted from this great mission that we have, to work for the salvation of souls. In fact, St. Jacinta, the youngest of the three Fatima children, she would become very sick, as Mary predicted, and she died at a young age. But while she was sick, she was living in a convent where the nuns there were taking care of her, and she continued to be visited by Mary. Mary continued to appear to her. And one day, Jacinta told the mother superior of the convent, she said, My dear mother, the sins that bring most souls to hell are the sins of the flesh. Certain fashions are going to be introduced which will offend our Lord very much. Those who serve God should not follow these fashions. The church has no fashions. Our Lord is always the same. The sins of the world are too great. If only people knew what eternity is, they would do everything in their power to change their lives. People lose their souls because they do not think about the death of our Lord and do not do penance. My good mother, do not give yourself to immodest clothes. Run away from riches. Love holy poverty and silence very much. Be very charitable even with those who are unkind. Never criticize others and avoid those who do. Be very patient, for patience leads us to heaven. Mortifications and sacrifice please our Lord a great deal. St. Jacinta, she was nine years old. There's great wisdom there. Wisdom which comes from God. Jesus and Mary, help us so that we may have a sense of urgency. Not anxiety that takes away our peace, but yes, a sense of urgency that we must make up for sin, for our sins and the sins of others. The salvation of souls is at stake. And after saying all that, Jacinta, she's now a saint, Saint Jacinta, spoke about confession. She said, Confession is a sacrament of mercy. That is why people should approach the confessional with confidence and joy. Without confession, there is no salvation. Mary encouraged the children and us to pray the rosary. She said, I want you to come here on the 13th of the next month. She said this in the first apparition. Say the rosary, inserting between the mysteries the following aspiration. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need. Most of us probably recognize that prayer. It's called the Fatima prayer for good reason. 
because Our Lady gave it to us at Fatima. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, encouraged us to pray the rosary every day this month for peace. For peace in Ukraine and peace throughout the whole world. For peace in souls, in each soul. And for there to be peace, what's necessary is conversion from sin. And so we turn to our mother Mary on this wonderful feast. Mary, help us see sin for what it is. May we not be deceived into thinking that hell doesn't exist. Hell does exist. And so does heaven. And there our Lord and our Lady and all the saints are waiting for us. And it's for that reason that we can live with great hope and at the same time a great desire to make reparation for sin. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.